Hi guys, this is Deepak. I'm here in Sanjeev Ji's office, although I'm in a different room and Sanjeev Ji is in a different room. And we have a surprise guest with us, Joshua. He's a business attorney and we have some great questions for him as to how you can deal with your long-term leases, your commercial leases that might be getting impacted right now due to this pandemic. So Sanjeev, you want to talk a little bit more about the situation that uh, many of our clients facing right now? Yes, yes, definitely. A lot of our clients, uh, they call in our office. They are saying that we, I'm not going, we are not going to offices. Uh, our employees are working on, of the, like from home. Uh, most of those clients are in IT businesses and they don't need an office right now. They feel they don't need this offices. Uh, rents are very high. The landlords are not helping them because they're saying they have, they have a lease agreement. Why uh, send us a bank statement, send us those uh, financial record to make sure to, uh, to see whether you really need some financial, uh, some settlement. Otherwise, they are not helping them. And the rents are very high. In the California Bay Area, the rents are tremendously very high. And people, are, the clients are feeling that pinch uh, of paying the rent. Of course, many of the clients got the PPP loan, but that PPP loan was uh, for, for mostly into payroll, went into payroll. So nothing was left for the rent payments. And this is pandemic is just going on and on. So there's no ending in sight. So people are worried now what to do with those rents. So that's where, that's where uh, Joshua, the, the business attorney, I was able to connect with him last week, uh, fortunately. And, uh, and I'm really uh, blessed with uh, Joshua coming on the show and trying to give some, some hints, some ideas, some options for our clients. So Joshua, I'll let you answer that question. Now, people who are stuck in leases, are there any legal remedies for these people? Is there anything they can do to avoid rent or perhaps even terminate the lease if needed? There are. And let me just take a, a second to further introduce myself, if that's okay. So my name is Josh Borger. I'm a partner at Berliner Cohen, a law firm in San Jose. And I have written and spoken on this topic. There, the answer is there's no clear cut answer. There's no, that is, there's no one size fits all for people in the law. This is going to fall under the doctrine of commercial frustration. And what that means is there was a frustrating event that was not foreseeable to any of the parties, the landlord or the tenant, um, that has destroyed the value of the lease and whether that uh, lets you out. There was a bill in the state legislature that was trying to deal with this. That bill is essentially dead. It, never, it didn't make it out of committee about a couple of weeks ago. And so now, since there, I'm not aware of any bill right now in the legislature dealing with this, it's going to be up to the courts. Currently, there is a stay of commercial evictions. The California Judicial Council, which governs the courts, has an emergency rule. But that stay only lasts for, I believe, three months after the governor lifts the emergency. So then it's going to be up to the courts for what they want to do. I've gone through the case law through World War I, World War II, and other similar situations trying to analogize to where we are. And so here, here is my take then based on that case law of um, the things you're going to want to look at to decide whether you can get out. The first is look at your lease and see. Everyone asks me, my lease says the purpose was to, for example, have a restaurant, and I can't have a restaurant inside, therefore do I get out of the lease? And the answer to that would be no. All leases have a purpose, it'll state, but the purpose doesn't mean that you have to do that. Under the law, um, you are allowed any reasonable purpose um, to operate, even though it says the purpose is, for example, a restaurant. So you'd want to see if there's a distinction between the purpose and whether your lease says, for example, again, you have to operate a restaurant. If it merely says the purpose, then the fact that you can't operate it wouldn't get you out because you don't have to have a restaurant. You would have a reasonable other purpose and then you would have to debate what that reasonable purpose is. If it says you have to have, for example, indoor dining and operate a restaurant and you can't, then that should fall under the doctrine of commercial frustration. We, we live by example, lawyers. Get, let me give you an example why I went back through the case law dealing in wars. There was someone from World War II who leased um, 
what was a hotel and they intended it to operate as a hotel for Japanese uh, citizens, Japanese ancestry in this area known as Little Tokyo in LA. But because of the evacuation of the Japanese, they were not able to do so. So they went to court and said they should be out of the lease. And the court said, no, while that was your purpose, it was not an agreed upon purpose by both sides. It was not agreed that you would have a, um, a hotel that was leased only to people of Japanese ancestry. So that didn't get you out. But if the lease had required it and you couldn't, then that may have gotten you out. So the first thing you're going to want to look at is that Another thing you're gonna to wanna to have to decide is, does the stay at home order or any of the government restrictions make your lease less profitable or entirely unprofitable? I'll give you another example from a case from World War II. Someone leased a neon sign and they were allowed out of that lease because there was a um, law that prohibited them from having neon signs at night because it told the enemy where the land was. So that essentially, that lease had no value. So the court let him out under the doctrine of commercial frustration. Now there was a different case where someone was leasing a car dealership and because of laws during the war, which limited the production, they, they weren't able to make as much money as they had hoped. The court said that did not terminate the lease you still had some value, just not as much as you had hoped. Now let's draw that analogy to today's setting of restaurants. Let's stay with that. You could have a restaurant that only had, had sit in dining and you were not allowed to operate. That would be closer to the neon sign where you should be allowed out of the lease under commercial frustration because you had no value. If you were allowed takeout or you were operating takeout, then I think you're closer to the second case where you had value, you just weren't making as much as before. So in that instance, I don't think the court would let you out. Now the question then becomes, some people are then gonna say, well, I would be better off just not doing takeout at all and then getting out of the lease because I don't think I'll survive. I don't know if the court would let you go back in time and do that if you were operating, but you simply decided not to. I tend to think the court wouldn't but that's an issue that we'll have to decide. The other issue that's going to come up for people and keeps coming up for the people that are, that are retaining me is whether or not this temporary period where they weren't able to fulfill their lease, where they weren't able to operate, justified terminating the lease. For the temporary period likely would get you out of paying the, the lease, depending on the language of the lease, there is a question, and there's conflicting law on this, of whether not being able to operate your lease for a set period of time is essentially terminating the lease. And again, I'll give you an example. There was a case from um, World War II where they were actually citing them back to World War I, where there was a submarine menace is what they were calling it. And people who had shipping couldn't leave the harbor under the law because it wasn't safe to do so. And even though they knew the war was not gonna last forever, they didn't know when it would end. And so it was deemed permanent. And as a result of being deemed permanent, the lease was terminated. They were allowed to be out of the lease. Here, coming back to this analogy, you could argue this is going on longer than anyone expected, COVID-19. And we don't know when we're really gonna get back to working in, a, in the normal environment, an argument can be made that because of that, just as the war example, you can get out of that lease. I don't know if the court will accept that argument. Um, there is again, conflicting law in this matter, but you could certainly make that argument. We don't know when this will end. So, so Joshua, let, let me ask you this. I'm assuming, I don't know if there are any statistics out there, are these kind of litigations already happening out there? Well, right now, there is a stay in commercial evictions from the Judicial Council of California, who governs the rules of the courts, has a stay. So you can sue for breach of contract 
if somebody is not paying rent. Um, but you will not be able to physically evict them right now. This moratorium, I believe, was for four months only, right? Uh, they are going to extend this moratorium beyond four months? Well, right now, there's different moratoriums. You have local governments have their moratoriums. Um, right now, because of the declared emergency, and I'm not talking about the moratorium from the state, but the governor has declared a state of emergency. So this moratorium is from the courts. It's the Judicial Council, which is very different than any moratorium that was issued by the governor or by the counties. And this moratorium governing the courts, it's a court rule, states that I believe it's for three months that currently you cannot have a commercial eviction and you cannot have one for, I believe it extends for three months after the governor lifts the emergency. So even if, for example, there were a local moratorium and that local one were lifted, the courts who would have to issue the judgment or order vacate, ordering this person to vacate, you're not gonna get that at this time. So, so Joshua, let me ask you the same question in a different way. For example, uh, people who are right now struggling in paying their leases, what do you recommend they should do? Should they wait until this whole thing is over and then kind of decide? Because this pandemic might actually force a lot of business owners, especially the smaller ones, into bankruptcy. So what should they actually do today? Right. And that's important to remember that there are a lot of businesses that even when the pandemic is over, will never recover. It's unfortunately, but they will end up in bankruptcy. At this point, uh, I can't say that I recommend to any client that if you owe rent, that you breach a contract. Um, that said, if you do breach it, I don't see how a court can issue an order um, vacating you. What I would recommend under these settings is that the landlords and the tenants are simply gonna have to renegotiate the lease. The landlord still has to pay the mortgage. The tenant still is going to have to pay something to be there. And I think that they can both still be successful if they lower the amount of rent. Now, it so, has to be something where the landlord can still pay the mortgage, but sure. everyone is just gonna have to negotiate something new. Otherwise, you're waiting to see the analogies that the court draws from previous wars. So basically, uh, uh, whether the, 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 the commercial uh, tenants like it or not, uh, they have to honor this uh, their rental agreement. There's a breach, there's a contract in between them. So if there's a financial hardships, if they can prove it, then they can have some kind of reneg renegotiation with the landlord. If not, uh, they have to come. They have to continue doing that. Whether they come to the office, their employees come to the office or not or come to the office, uh, there's no other way. There's no option, right? Well, there is another option. Let me let me clarify. If a tenant believes that, given what I've explained, that their lease should be terminated they can terminate the lease and hand over the keys. Okay. If there is a dispute about this, you can always sue for what is called declaratory relief. That is, you believe, given what I said, that your lease has terminated. The landlord says, no, you're wrong. It did not. And I will come after you for, I can still sue you for rent that is owed. You've handed your keys, thanks for the keys but I can still sue you for rent because I didn't terminate the contract. Your landlord could sue for breach of contract. You could also sue the landlord because you want some assurance that you're not wrong. You can sue for what's called declaratory relief. You want the court to state, is the lease terminated or is it not terminated? You can take that initiative versus just continuing to pay rent. Okay. So there's obviously some option for the uh, this one, right? In this case, well, right? you might, then actually, this this makes actually more sense to me because some of these uh, business owners might be paying fifteen, twenty thousand dollars month in rent, and if this pandemic goes on for another ten months, twelve months, uh, I mean, you're talking about huge pending liabilities. It's better to take care of them now. Um, and then maybe, like you said, maybe you kind of work up with that dual strategy where you negotiate with the landlord and take care of this. That look, I can't afford to pay rent until this thing is over. And, and if this thing is over, then we can start all over again. Right.
you could do that. Or there's something called mitigating damages. So if you think you're right, then vacate, hand the landlord the keys and say, in your opinion, it's terminated. And then if the landlord disagrees, you can sue and try to get the court to decide. That's your assurance. The court may decide for you. Um, the landlord had a duty then to mitigate their damages is what it's called. They wouldn't be able to just sit there, wait until the end of the lawsuit and say, well, that was two years ago. You owe me two years of rent. They would have a duty to try to find another tenant to lessen their damages. Um, now, that's tricky in this situation because I would imagine there is not a whole lot of demand for commercial space at this time. So they may try, but that likely isn't going to go anywhere. So just a simple, uh, uh, putting in a simple way. So if, if, the, if, the, if my client is working from home, if their employees are working from home, just because they're working from home is not the way to get out from the lease. That's, that's fair? Just because you're working from home, the lease does not automatically terminate. And the exception to everything I'm saying is you have to read the lease. Read Every the lease. lease is going to have its own wording. I'm okay. giving people general law on these topics, but people are going to want to have to read the exact language. But I can't fathom that a lease is going to say because somebody works from home, the lease is terminated. People can work from home in this valley. People work from home all the time. All the time. So if the client has to have to contact you on this one, uh, can you give us your details and contact number and how to connect with you? Sure. Um, again, my name is Josh Borger, B-O-R-G-E-R. -E I am a partner at the law firm of Berliner Cohen, www.berliner.com. My email is j-o-s-h dot I'm sorry, J-O-S-H-U-A dot B-O-R-G-E-R -E at B-E-R-L-I-N-E-R dot -E -E com. The general phone number here is 408-286-5800 and just ask to speak to Josh Borger. Okay. And guys, I will also put the Josh uh, contact information below this video so you have easy access to that information. Now, Josh, before I let you go, I have another quick question for you. Just to, if you don't mind, for two minutes, give us a quick market update as to what kind of uh, issues are you seeing arising right now? So that way business owners can be a little bit more aware of what they should watch out for on both sides of the fence. Where should they protect and where should they attack? With respect to just generally how the law is changing right now or things to look Yeah, past? like what kind of situations you're seeing? Because uh, I'm saying, I'm sure there are people out there who are probably trying to take advantage of business owners and maybe suing them for that reason. So how can they protect themselves? What actions can they take to be a little bit more, you know, preactive right now, basically? And then, and, and then anything else that you might be seeing out there in the industry right now? Sure. One of the big disputes right now is whether business interruption insurance, which is property insurance, is gonna cover losses due to COVID-19. Right. There is a lawsuit out there, Thomas Keller filed on behalf of the French Laundry in Bouchon, and a lot of people are waiting for that. I actually don't think that's gonna be relevant to most people because Thomas Keller's policy is a very tailored policy to someone who has very deep pockets. It's not the policy most people have. So my recommendation would be for people to try to get past this is to tender business loss claims to your insurance company and have your policy reviewed. I think there are arguments for why you should be allowed coverage for business losses, even in California due to COVID-19. I have some articles that people are, want to email me that I can send to you. There is certainly case law and an argument against it. We're all going to have to wait and see what the courts do, but I would hate for someone to have a claim and they just didn't timely make that claim. So the first thing I would do is tender to your insurance carrier under your property insurance policy to try to claim business losses. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely on everybody's mind. What else is going on? Um, there has been an increase in wire fraud, which is another topic that I've had to litigate because, and hackings, because everyone is working from home. 
and people were not ready to have this type of private information going back and forth from their home to their office. And so the, there has been an increase in wire fraud. So be very careful in that, in phishing emails. I had a client at one point that lost over $400,000 wow. in a wire fraud scheme. I was able to claw the money back. It had gone all over the world. That was not easy. And so I would caution people to be very careful in the phishing scams. Um, anyone who is a fiduciary, anyone who deals in large sums of money, lawyers, accountants, any business people, those are the ones they're targeting. Wow. Good to, good to know, good to know about that. So definitely, uh, Joshua, thank you for coming on to, to our show and uh, video. We are going to telecast this to our, to the, for the benefit of our, our clients and, and whoever comes on our website. And we'll do, we'll do more things like this in the coming weeks, right, Deepak? Yeah, absolutely. I think Josh has a great library of other important topics that he will share with us that might be of some benefit to some of you guys. So we'll be happy to share those with you guys. And then if you guys have any questions uh, for Josh, you can definitely reach out. I will put his contact information below the video so you will have easy access to him. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us. We are still open. We are still working. As you can see, Sanjeev Ji still have a lot of files on his desk. So he's still filing taxes. So if you have any questions concerned with that, definitely come up. We do have a webinar coming up. Those of you guys who are watching this video, if you have not registered for the webinar, I think about 80 or 90 registrations so far. We still have another couple hundred seats available. So if you would like to register for that, go to sanjeevcpa.com and right on homepage, you can register for that webinar. That's going to happen next month where Sanjeevji will talk more about PPP loan. He will talk about what has changed in the new stimulus package uh, and any other market updates. What is actually happening today? What's relevant? So okay. I hope that will help you. Thank you. All right. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.